Hey, Schooly John made a fantastic SketchUp model in my modular open helix. We're going to show you how you can build that for a hundred bucks right now. Hey, happy fall y'all and welcome to the Denver and Rio Grande Western Iron Horse Route. Thing. Stick around for today's video, which is coming up next. My name is Brian and welcome to my N-Scale Model Railroad channel. Today, John and I are going to show you exactly how we did the math, did the turn radius. I'm going to go over the products I used and the cost of those used. This is going to show you how to build a modular open helix for a hundred bucks. And keep in mind, this is a six part series, okay? I'm going to put a card at the end screen so you can watch the playlist in its entirety. And I'm also going to put one right here right now. Get straight to work right after I tell you the sequence real quick. John and I are going to go over the SketchUp model. He made a fantastic SketchUp model of my modular open helix. We're going to go over the math that went into figuring out the grades and the turn radii and all that stuff. Then I'm going to go over the products I used on the modular open helix and the price, and you'll know how you can build it yourself in just a minute. In the beginning, John and I went over some of this stuff, and we did the math on everything, and he helped me come up with a turn radii and a grade that would stay under 3% and get up to the elevation that I needed. About eight weeks ago, I had this lame brain crazy idea to build a modular open helix outside of the layout and had no idea how to start. Um, been modeling less than a year and was, and was taking on a project that about a 10 year model rail owner might should try. And so what I did was one of the only smart things I did in the beginning of those processes, I decided to reach out to somebody who knew a little bit more than me about modeling and more importantly math. Um, so John and I got together on Google Hangouts and started talking. And he actually helped me crunch some numbers in the get go. And I don't know exactly how you did it, John, but what we did is, I know we, are, we started from a point that we needed to go up about 10 and a half or 11 inches to get from the table to the top. And I think I asked you, if I remember correctly, I asked you, is it possible to stay under a 3% grade? And you did some number crunching from there. What can you tell me about that? Can you refresh my memory on how you figured that out? So, well, what we did is we started with that drawing that you had. Uh, with the, the color drawing with the, the five five levels. Based on that, we worked out the, the length of the track that you were going to be putting down. Okay. And the, the idea there was that would give us a starting point That's to right. see you know what that length of track was going to give us for the elevation. You had uh, eight half circles uh, of a 23-inch diameter circle. 11 and a half radius, right? So that gave us four full circles and the circumference of a circle is pi times diameter. So your diameter was 23 inches times pi, which is 3.1415. Okay. Gave us 72 and a quarter inches per, per full circle. All right. You had four of that. That's right. So four, four times that gives us 200. So just the curved portions gave us 289 inches of track. All right. Then, then, and the, the it, it's not circles, it's not around here. Right. Circles. Well, that that's what we had to take into account. We started with it being round. That's right. And if it was round, we would have had 289 inches. All right. Then you went and on two of the circles, you added a one-inch extension. Two of, the, two, of, two of those half circles in the front. Yes. Okay. So that was added two more inches, getting us to 291 inches. Okay. Then you had, on the first level, you had two straight sections of 16 inches each. That's right. Second level was two sections of 12 inches. Okay. Third level was two sections of 10 inches. That's right. The fourth level was two straight sections of eight inches. And then when you ended up the fifth level, you had one section of 16 inches that takes you off to to where, to where the extension. That's right. All right. And that was a total uh, of? 397 inches. Okay. 
and then the math that went so, in to figure the grade. So it, it, it's, it's simple dividing the, the uh, elevation change of 11 inches into the 397 inches, which, which gave, gave, us, us, uh, gave us a grade of two and three quarter inches. 2.75. Uh, two and three quarter. That's right. Degrees, not inches. Okay. That's that's doable. Um, so basically, in a 48 inch area, um, I'm going up 11 inches, and to get from right um, point A to point B, I had to go 400 inches around, but that kept us under a three percent grade at 2.75. Now before that, I had like three levels and was going to 10. Um, so that was re some ridiculous grade. And all right, I actually sat down and tried to do the SketchUp version, which is a, a CAD program and it's free. And on the free version, I tried to do the Helix myself and was kind of unsuccessful and got frustrated. And John saved the day again. And he put some serious time in. He actually, it's kind of like a puzzle, and I think it became like a challenge for him, but did a fantastic job. Can you show us that now and give us a little explanation, kind of basically what we just did was explain the math that went into it. We actually have an audio visual that, or not an audio visual, a visual. John can be the audio, and we can, he can explain in a little more detail the thought that went into the process. And can we switch oh. over to that? All right. Let me share my screen here. Now, a SketchUp screen now? I do. Look at that. Look at that. All right. Let me explain something to y'all, ladies and gentlemen, before he starts. That right there is tough to do. I could build, I built my house, top to bottom, inside and out, to within an inch everywhere, and I couldn't do this. Go, go ahead, John. Tell us about this. Oh, it was definitely challenging. Uh, now, this isn't isn't exact, and it's not nice and smooth, as you can see. As you can see here, the angles are a little bit off. But I did this in sections similar to the way you would build it. So we start right here at the first level. And you can see here that we have a, a pretty consistent grade going up all the way around, even though the levels don't quite line up here. It's probably more consistent than I got the real one. But <laughs> 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 it's close. But. So, so here's, here's it, it's real close. And, and you did make some changes to it. You added a couple turnouts that I don't have in here. Yeah. But here is the two one extensions in the, uh, in the half circles. They were in, they were on the front side of the of the helix. So I, I guess I should say this just in case uh, your buddy Rick is watching. Yeah. But the, these two straight pieces here, this one on the first level, this one on the second level, they're actually not exactly 16 inches and 12 inches. They're a hair more because of this one inch extension. That's right. Because they come back on a slight angle. But the different the the 16 inch one is actually something like 16.03 inches. Okay. So it's it's pretty insignificant difference. And you would be measuring that as you cut it anyhow. Correct. All right, no problem. So that, uh, so and and the right the rest of it other than the the dimension changes on the the lengths of these straight pieces is pretty much the same. Uh, you can ignore this one straight piece. I was having trouble with that. And this program can be really frustrating sometimes. Mm. Amen. But we just it just continue, continues around. This is the the grade that I'm showing here is real close to two and three quarter inches or two and three quarter degrees. I'm sorry. All right. It's probably off a little bit, but not far. And we come around, and here's the top level. Or we come out in the straight section. That it looked cool for a second, but I like it like this too. John, um, 
397 inches uh, is. I didn't warn John that I was. <laughs> no, I wasn't prepared for that no. one. No. Uh, it works out to it. Okay, we're just over a scale mile. All right. And what is a mile? A, a mile is 5,200. Okay. 5,280 5, feet. 5,280. Okay. So we so, got 13 feet. So this modular open helix that I made for 100 bucks has a scale mile of track on it. In uh, less than four right. feet, I'm climbing to 11 inches from ground level to 11 inches tall at a two and three quarter. So I've seen grade. the modular open and helix in action off layout with a 10 car train. You've seen the modular open helix off layout with a 10 car train. RC Rick seen that, and so has anybody who's watched the videos. Um, what do you think is going to happen once we put it in? you have any predictions? I think it's going to work well. I, the, the helix is really sturdy looking. The The train was running really nice and smooth up and down. I think the only the only question mark is tying it into your existing track work. And you're not kidding. All right, we're looking at everything that I used, materials and products here for the construction of the helix. Drills, rulers, glue, water, solder, net rail nippers, saws, files. As you can see, we're looking at the two Pico turnouts right now, a right hand and a left hand, both number sixes. That's Pico flex track. I used 10 pieces on the helix. Those are skewers from Dollar General and dowels from Michaels. Cork from Hobby Lobby. It comes in a two by two roll and hardboard for from Lowe's. It can be purchased in four by eight sheets or four by four sheets. Total cost right at a hundred bucks. That's ready to run, ready to roll, ready to go to include rail joiners. Okay, I gotta thank John for his help with the SketchUp model in this video, as well as the creation of this video, as well as the planning of the modular open helix that went into this whole thing at the beginning. I wanna thank you for sticking around and watching today. And if you enjoyed this video, I wanna encourage you to subscribe, click the bell icon and share this with your other model and friends. Thank you again. I look forward to seeing you soon. Next week, this time, same place, same channel, we'll have the installation of the modular open helix on my N-Scale Model Railroad. See y'all soon. One more thing from you. If you haven't already, I need you to click right here or click here or here or here. Anywhere to stick around, just stick around.